everybody this is Linda again and welcome back to my channel today I thought we would have a chat about service accounts because I think that a lot of people either don't realize that they could be using a service account when they should be using a service account and then there's other people that try using a service account when in fact they shouldn't be using a service account so I thought we'd just kind of chat about uh, service accounts. The problem I see a lot on Stack Overflow is that people are using service accounts when in fact they shouldn't be using service accounts. And I also see a lot of people who are making their lives difficult by not using a service account when they actually should be. And I think that's because there's not a lot of information out there on exactly what a service account is, when you should use it, and why you should use it. So I thought we'd just sit, chat, and, and we'd talk about that. So what is a service account? Well, a service account is a dummy user. A lot of people think that a service account is, their, is, is them, really. Uh, I see a lot of people on Stack Overflow who think, hey, I created a service account, so it should have access to all of my data on my Google Drive account. And that's not how service accounts work. Think of service accounts as another user. And this other user doesn't have access to any data until you give it that access. So if I want to share a folder on my Google Drive account with my boyfriend, I would take his email address and then share the folder with them, with him. And then he would be able to access all of the files within that folder. You do exactly the same thing with the service account. I share the folder with it and the service account will have access to it. Now, because a service account has its own Google Drive account, Technically, when you upload a file to it, the file is being uploaded to the service accounts, Google Drive account. This is where a lot of people have issues because they come on Stack Overflow and say, hey, I ran my service account, I uploaded a file, I can't find it. That's because you're not looking in the right place. Service accounts do not have a web interface, which means that you can't go over on the Google Drive web application and look for the file. You're not gonna find it because it was uploaded to the service account itself. If you then do a file list with the service account, you'll get a list back of all the files that you mistakenly uploaded to the service accounts drive account. So, what else can you do with the with a service account? Well, if you have a G, G Suite account or a Google Workspace account, if you have that, then you can actually use the service account using domain-wide delegation on your domain to access Google uh, Gmail and Google Calendar. You can make like an internal company calendar that the service account would have access to keep control over and invite people to and... Yeah, I, I helped a company make uh, make one of those uh, meeting room uh, type of uh, storage systems using Google Calendar, where people could uh, book uh, time slots into meeting rooms. That was that was a very good use for a service account. But unfortunately, over the last couple of years, Google has been locking down service accounts so that you can only use Gmail and Calendar if you have uh, G Suite or Google Workspace accounts. You, you can't use it with a normal um, Gmail account anymore. There's several reasons for that, which I fully support, but it can make life a lot more difficult for developers. Uh, another thing you should know about service accounts is service accounts do not work with all Google APIs. Uh, it does not work with YouTube and it does not work with Blogger, for example. Those are the two that I am aware of other than uh, Gmail and Calendar limitations. So that's what you should know about service accounts to begin with. So when should you consider using a service account? You should consider using a service account if you are accessing internal company data. 
So if this is something internally that you control, you the developer control or your company controls, you should use, you should really consider using service account because it makes your life a lot easier. Um, if you did not use a service account, then you would need a user's consent. The user would have to pop up a consent screen and the user would have to click, yes, I would like to access their data. Um, you can, you can fudge service account access. It's not as stable, but what you could do if you wanted to access a, like a Google calendar and you did not have, um, G Suite, what you can do is use the normal OAuth 2 method, request access, like for example, created on my account, request access, get a refresh token back store that refresh token someplace in your application and then use that refresh token whenever you want to access it. In this way, you would be pretending to be that specific user, which is kind of like using a service account. So again, the, if it's internal data, you can go ahead and create a, a service account and use a service account. It's, it, they're very good, for example, if you're doing anything like a cron job, it, they would be really, really nice for, for cron jobs because then it'll just, it'll just go ahead and run. Um, I've set up several cron jobs for companies where they had their backups uh, were moved to a directory every night and then we had a cron job running to upload them to the server ran like a dream, probably still running to this day years and years later because service accounts, they just, they just work and they're really, really nice to use. Um, so if you can use a service account, I highly recommend using one. So another thing to consider is the, the code needed to use a service account. You need to remember that when you create the service account, um, you have to create a JSON key file. Um, I actually recommend creating the JSON key file. You can create the P12 file. Google has been saying for years that they are going to do away with the P12 file. And I have actually seen several issues with the P12 files on, um, ho when, when hosted on like windows servers. Um, so if you can use the JSON key file, I highly recommend using that one over the P12, because if Google does decide to kill the P12 files, then you will be all set. You were just using the JSON ones. And as far as I know, all of the Google API, uh, cal uh, client libraries support both the JSON key file and the P12. Um, so in, in order to find a sample project uh, for a service account in your chosen language, uh, you probably will not find an example on the documentation for the API that you want to use just because Google does not give us documentation for every single language for every single authorization type. What I recommend you do is find the GitHub project for the client library that you are working with. If you are working with the Google apis.net client library, go check GitHub. It's there. Uh, if you're checking, Java, Node.js, all of those client libraries are on GitHub. Go and check them. 90% of the time, they will have an example in the initial readme of how to use the different OAuth methods. Often not the web-based one, but for service accounts, it should be there. Um, and you'll have an example of, of how to load it. It's, it's very simple loading a service account. Uh, the only thing you need to consider is which level of scope to grant the service account. Personally, because of the fact that I use service accounts internally and it's data that I own and I control, I almost always give the service account full access, full drive access. I don't see any reason to limit it. Um, technically speaking, you could limit it. You, there's no reason not to limit them. I mean, if you're only going to access read data, then you might as well only ask, you know, request the read scope. But I, I'd like I said, I don't, I don't see any point. I just access drive and it, it gives it full drive access or full analytics access. It doesn't matter. Um, 
one of the most important things I think we should discuss is how to grant a service account access to your data. Unfortunately for Gmail and um, Calendar, I can't help you too much because like I said, recently Google made some changes that says that you can only use them with uh, G Suite or G, uh, Google Workspace accounts. Um, and I haven't actually had access to a workspace account in a number of years, but as far as like Google drive, if you want to give the service account access to your Google drive account, um, you can't give it access to root, but you can create a directory on your personal Google drive account and then take the email address and add the, um, service account as a user, share it with it, and it'll have instant access. If you want to grant it access to Google Analytics data, for example, you would take the service accounts email address and again, go into Google Analytics under the admin section and add it as a user there. I think this works the same with some of the other APIs, any API that you can add another user and grant them access, it should work with. There's, there's quite a few of the other APIs that you can add users to. Um, there's the webmasters tool API you can add a user to, and I am pretty sure it'll work with that as well. Then there's also AdSense. I think you can add another user to AdSense as well. I need to test each one of these APIs because if the API, when you add a user that the user actually has to confirm your access, then the service account's not going to work. That's why it doesn't work with blogger because when you add somebody as a user on your blogger account, um, they have to confirm it. And the same with YouTube. When you add somebody, they have to confirm their access. Um, so that doesn't work with, uh, service accounts because the service account won't approve its access and won't grant it. So you just need to figure out how to share access to it or how to give somebody else permission and use the service accounts email address and it, it should work. Um, if you find an API that you can't get it to work with, please let me know because I would love to build up a list of APIs that we know for a fact service accounts either work or don't work with, because I think that would be really nice to have a list because Google isn't giving us a list. We have to figure this stuff out for ourselves. Um, another way to find out whether or not a service account works for your API is to go to the API documentation and look under authorization. If it only says OAuth2 and does not mention service accounts or domain wide delegation, then you can almost a hundred percent be sure that it doesn't support it. Because honestly, we do not document things we don't support. We only document things we do support. So if they did support it, they would have documented it. But that's just my opinion. Okay. I think I have chatted enough about service accounts. Um, I hope you learned something and I hope you consider using a service account and I hope you know why you should and when you shouldn't use a service account after watching this. Um, and uh, I hope you consider giving this a like and uh, subscribing because like I said, it's a very new YouTube channel and I'd love to know whether or not you've enjoyed what I'm doing. Um, and as always, I hope you have a really great day.